Hello, Namaskar and welcome Network Analysis or Port and CPM. And now after learning about earliest start time, earliest finish time, latest start time, latest finish time, total float, interfering float, it is turn of free float. Let's learn about the free float. First of all, what is free float? The free float is that part of the total float. Yes, free float is also part of total float, which can be used without affecting the float of the succeeding activities. Yes, we can use total float as we know to delay or extend or postpone non-critical activity without affecting the deadline of the project. Now, in the previous lecture while understanding the interfering activity, we also discussed that using the float may affect the floats of the other succeeding activities of the project. Now, which part of total float is available to consume and consuming that will not affect the floats of the succeeding activities. Yes, very interesting point. So ultimately the free float is that value of the float which is consumable when succeeding activities can be started at their earliest start times. Yeah. And the formula is please instead of only trying to remember the formula do try to understand how the free float is calculated from this chart. The formula can be written as earliest start time of the succeeding activity minus earliest finish of the current activity. Let's calculate it for A. A and its succeeding activity is D. So earliest start time of D comes to 2. And earliest finish time of this activity means A comes to 2. This 2, earliest start time of D minus this 2, earliest finish time of A. 0. In case of B, even if you don't write the floats for uh, critical activities, it is always allowed. In case of B, the succeeding activities are these three and their start times are same, seven and earliest finish time of B is also seven. So seven minus seven, it must be zero and it is C. Okay, in case of C, the succeeding activity is at node number four H. The earliest start time of H is 8 and earliest finish time of C is 8, 8 minus 8 is 0. D. Succeeding activity of D is I. Earliest start time of I is 13 and earliest finish time of D is 5. 13 minus 5. Eight. See the total of these two doesn't exceed total float. Yeah. Uh, e succeeding activities again I. The earliest start time of I is 13. The earliest finish time of E is 13. 13 minus 13 is 0. See I is common successor of D and E. But the floats are different. F, in case of F, it would be 0 because F is the critical activity. Let's check. Successor of F is J. Earliest start time of J is 17. Earliest finish time of F is 17. So 17 minus 17 equals to 0. It must be 0 because it is critical activity. G. The succeeding activity of G is K. Earliest start time of K is 15. Earliest finish time of G is 11. 15 minus 11 equals to 4. See 4 plus 1 comes to 5. H. Its successor is J. 
earliest start time of J is 17, earliest finish time of H is 14. 17 minus 14 comes to 3. Yes, next is I. Its succeeding activity is K. Earliest start time of K is 15. Earliest finish time of I is 15. 15 minus 15 is 0. J. Okay. J has no succeeding activity. Yes, and J is critical activity. So its float is 0. K has no succeeding activity, but C, the project can be completed by virtue of J's completion time after 22 days and K's earliest finish time is 21. So we can say that 22, the earliest start of the event of Finishing the project 22, total duration of project 22 minus earliest finish time of activity K21, so it comes to 1. So these are the say amounts of time period which we can use to delay the respective activity without affecting the floats of their succeeding activities and this kind of float is known as free float and free float is also a part of total float. In the next lecture that will be the last lecture on discussion of various topics of the case and the topic will be independent float. That's it. Thank you very much.